And let's keep talking college football with a guy who was at Alabama on Saturday night in an incredible college football game. What Josh an Pate. environment, too. Our good buddy, the uh, Josh Pate College Football Show, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday on YouTube, 5 o'clock our time. You can give him a follow on Twitter at Josh Pate CFB and check the podcast wherever uh, you get your podcast. Josh, a million different things I want to get to, including a chaos Saturday in which a graphic on the show last night, my team was included. So I need to ask how strong my pucker factor should be. But I want to start... You did the show on Sunday, and you said that was a top three atmosphere you've ever been in, which now is going to lead me to ask the question. I, I need your Mount Rushmore of stops on the tour over the last couple of years. What are the three or four best, and where does that one rank? Uh, very good question. Good morning to you all. I think the three that come to mind very quickly are that one, and then Bama at Tennessee a couple of years ago, yeah, the where they got post. upset, yeah, goalpost in the river, blah, blah, blah. And then also... Uh, two of the Red River shootout games out of the last three years have been total, utter insanity. I also think you could put the first time that I went to Michigan and saw him beat Ohio State, that's way up there. So it's in the mix with some very, very lofty company. Uh, I don't like to do a lot of gotcha radio here, so I'm asking sincerely. You were at the Bama-Georgia game. It was fantastic. If I was to ask Josh Pate last year, Georgia didn't make the playoff. Was Georgia top four in the country to Josh Pate? Um, are you asking in terms of whether they – you know we have to do this. Are you asking whether I think they should have been in as like a committee member or as a power rating sort of thing? Uh, I'm asking as a committee member. Did you think Georgia losing their first game in like two years in the SEC title game was still <laughs> worthy of being in a 14 playoff? I do not. I would have had them out. Okay. So I agreed. I agreed – Actually, with all four teams, I agreed with Florida State not being in and Bama being in. I agreed with Georgia losing to Bama and not being in. Now, the Georgia gripe is, Josh, you know good and well we're better than fill in the blank. Yeah, I think I do too. But the the thing about it is this sport would suck if we seeded the playoff based on what I think. Like, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> and I'm even talking about myself. My My own personal opinion shouldn't matter. We've got teams all the time that face off on Saturday, and I think one's going to win and the other does. So at the end of the day, what is any of our opinion worth? You have to have a merit-based mechanism in order to make a playoff or seed a playoff. Now, having said that, there does have to be a lot of common sense injected when it comes to how we measure the criteria. You can't just say you are what your record says you are, or else Liberty could get in undefeated this year and Georgia could have three losses. Uh, Georgia with three losses is probably still a lot better and more deserving than Liberty. So there has to be qualification there. But I did agree with Georgia not being in. Well, now I feel like Mark Wahlberg and the other guys, and you will ferald me, and now the tuna are eating the lion. <laughs> that did not go how I thought. But I guess my point, my question I was leading into is I thought – Saturday, as great as that game was, as weird as it start it was for Georgia, I actually thought it was the best argument for why the expanded playoff could be a good thing for the sport because I know Georgia, even though they dropped the ball in the first half or threw the ball to the other team, they're still a top whatever team in college football that I think is worthy of playing for the playoff. So I guess my argument would just be more like, I think I thought that was actually the, the good case for an expanded playoff because you still had everybody that cared. The ratings were the highest they've ever been. Message boards are still on fire with let's fire this guy and get rid of that guy and sit that guy, and yet they can still make a playoff having lost that game. Yeah, but I would say they'd still be in it with the four-team model. Like, this game is a loss on the road to a top-five team. You're certainly still in contention for your conference title. I mean, how many times have we seen one-loss teams make the four-team playoff in the past? It Very rarely was it four undefeated teams, so they'd still be alive for it. You know, in, in my perfect world, I guess perfect considering where we are, let me put it that way, I would love to see – I mean, if you're going to go to the extreme of the Big Ten and the SEC running everything, which I hate, but if oh. we're going that direction, I would just love to sort of backfill in how we define a playoff, and I would love for – you know, the structure of the conference title to in and of themselves become tournaments. And so take the top four teams in each of those conferences at the end of the year and, you know, bracket it, semifinal, final within the conference, and then have those two teams meet wherever. Like, if that's the direction you're going to go. Now, the direction I would love to go is hit rewind and have a do-over on all this stuff. You know <laughs> me you know me well enough to know that. But I just – I do like the idea that – 
I, or I, I do argue the idea. The other night they had me on CBS post game, and they thought they were going to get me on it because I've made my stance on playoff expansion very obvious. And they were they were like, well, now with how urgent this game felt, how incredible this game felt, don't you have to argue this was good and this was validation of playoff expansion? And I kept saying, play the tape of me before this game. I told you guys, Mm -hmm. this rivalry doesn't need any postseason implication. Georgia-Bama is like its own world. I live down here. I live on the border of the states for a long time. So that's not the proof for or against playoff expansion. In fact, a big matchup in September was never going to be that proof. It's how the big matchups in November – feel featuring the games or featuring games featuring teams capable of winning the title and they have urgency removed from them so that we can manufacture urgency on games featuring teams that we all probably know won't win the title like that's been my whole thing but that's mm. a side note and i'm not here to filibuster uh dirt you know how a, a small wrestler sneaks into the ring yeah and hits the giant in the back with the, the big chair. you just hit the big show with and, the chair and, and you turn around and you just turn around and like grab my throat did, yeah. choke slam it did not yeah. go how i thought at all royal rumble you've been tossed out of the ring yeah that, that just happened yeah, yeah like, hey really, look at this guy he's gonna get him nope, no he's tossed no, right out of the you ring. just got flown into the third row that's why he's the commissioner josh that's Pate. True. at josh Pate cfb on Twitter Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, the show live on YouTube, five o'clock our time, and you can catch the podcast wherever uh, you get your podcast. I'm watching the show last night, and I'm wondering going into Friday night, how strong should my pucker factor be? And here comes Josh Pate telling me <laughs> this is going to be a chaos Saturday, and then I see the graphic of that game included in the mix. So you rank games on a one through five Chalai ranking system. I will ask you on a one through ten pucker system, where should my pucker be? Michigan State coming to town, short week, and oh by the way, a pretty big one. Coming the next Saturday. Okay, well, first off, you need to know I'm absolutely stealing this phrase. So that's mine now. That's going to be used on every TM, Thursday. Dirt break, TM, Dirt Spray, TM, 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 TM right now, TM. On. I'm calling my lawyers, TM, okay? <laughs> yeah, so I think, I don't think the pucker factor should be that incredibly high for, for Oregon, Michigan State. Now, in totality, there should be a lot of puckering going on nationally because yeah. I think we're going to have some really, really – surprising slash shocking upsets come this weekend. It is there are far too many big ranked favorites against unranked conference opponents. And it's normally the conference teams that do it to you. They know each other too well. Um, I think, though, Michigan State, that's, that's a game where Jonathan Smith, who I call Jonathan Stewart on the <laughs> we show. We got that last night. Yeah, yeah, I caught yeah, that. <laughs> that was great. People really love it when you do that. So I think that Oregon will be okay there. I don't Because they've got the Friday atmosphere, too, I don't think there's really much of a look-ahead factor. We all know what's coming up. But I also think they got scared early enough in the season where there's no look-ahead factor. They should be okay. If they're not, they got much bigger problems. Yeah. And so I think they're okay. But some of these other games – like, Georgia-Auburn, just for example, has a similar point spread as Oregon-Michigan State. I know most people haven't watched Auburn. Auburn's been uh, two and three teams so far, or three and two, whatever they are. They have been really good offensively, and then they've turned the ball over a ton, which doesn't matter. That means you lose games. But what we know about this sport is just randomly one week, that kind of team, if they're even or plus one in the turnover margin, they could flip the script on you really quickly because all of a sudden you realize, oh, that's actually a really good team that's been masquerading as a bad team because of this one flaw. And maybe the flaw is not gone, but it just disappeared for one week. You got that one. You got Ole Miss at South Carolina. Guys, yeah. it's October. Anything can happen in October. And so South Carolina is <laughs> welcoming them in. South Carolina is rested. Arkansas is in total desperation mode. Tennessee has to go in there. So there's a lot of these games. Uh, Iowa at Ohio State. No one expects that to be competitive, but no one's seen Ohio State play a legit defense this year either. So we're just testing a lot of different dams this week, and I think we're going to find some cracks in some of them. Clemson's played really well since they got blown out by Georgia. I think people pretty encouraged with what they're seeing with Clemson. Miami just – I. You know, I didn't think that was a catch. They somehow got the ACC to intervene and give them a win off of a weird Hail Mary ending in a game that I didn't think they'd be involved in with Virginia Tech. You talk about pucker factor or look-ahead spot there. Miami's going to the woke agenda this weekend. Game day is going to be in Berkeley. I'm curious what you make of Miami at this point. Does one game change your thought process, or are we to say maybe that was a game they just didn't play clean, they get back to what they've looked like prior to that? you got to understand – I grew up in the most deep red part of this country of ours. (laughs) And the folks, even from my hometown, 
are loving what Cal's doing right now. Yep. They are um, they're on a different level, dude. Whoever came up with woke versus coke to describe <laughs> Cal versus Miami, I don't know what they do for a living, but they deserve a raise. Yeah, that's I agree that's with what that. they deserve. Um, to be honest with you, I mean, you know I, I believe in full disclosure on this show. Yep. I got so preoccupied with getting excited about woke versus coke. I didn't even listen to the rest of the question, so you're going to have to restate it. <laughs> Just Miami. Miami crystal ball looking how some people worry with Mario. For whatever reason, he's got this thing. He gets the Jimmies and the Joes, but he has those games. Now, was that just the one-off? Does Cam Ward play like that again, where I thought he was good but also bad? What do you make of Miami going into Cal? Game day is going to be there, but it's a late kick. Yeah, I really was disappointed watching them last Friday night, um, only because when you – start to elevate into the conversation they've been in, you're supposed to sort of immunize yourself from the problems that just pretty good teams have. Like a pretty good team still falls victim to that sort of nonsense. The really good teams, the potentially great teams, they're supposed to play to a standard every week. And Miami had, but then all of a sudden they didn't. And uh, you're allowed, you're allowed one just total throwaway game. I've got no problem with that. It's like when your teacher was willing to throw out the lowest graded paper. But you better not have three or four papers graded that low or else you're just, you're just a, an underachieving student. That's what you are. So this is not the biggest test in the world. I mean, if we're being real, it, it'd be kind of disingenuous to say, boy, Miami's got to prove they're a national title contender by what they do against Cal. No, that's not where you prove it. You can prove you're not one against Cal. You won't definitively prove you are one. Miami's schedule is very void of those sorts of opportunities. I mean, their biggest remaining game is, what, Louisville or someone like that. So they'll have to ultimately make their statements down the road in the conference title game and in playoff. But I don't know, man. Their, their line of scrimmage play disappointed me the other night. Mm -hmm. So I'm not off of Miami, but I am back to the mode where you kind of have to reprove yourself to me. Yeah, I think that's a three-and-a-half pucker on the scale. We'll chart you down for that one. Josh Pate, our guest, every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, live on YouTube. Josh Pate, College Football Show, at Josh gauging, Pate, CFB. How are we gauging the pucker factor there? The three, You said it's a three-and-a-half. Three and half. It, it sounded mean? like a three-and-a-half. I mean, there's a little pucker. There's not no pucker, but it's not like, oh, my God, I'm panicking. But, like, there's a pucker. You're going into that game with a bit of a pucker, and you want to see your team play better. You're just well, squeezing one cheek. You're, yeah, you're so squeezing I'm, a cheek. So yeah. I'm not Nacho Libre against the wall. No. You see it with the pants. No. One no. cheek squeeze, okay. other cheek lose, and depending on how Saturday night goes. That ability, uh, okay. I do want to ask you, Josh, about uh, a game up here in the Northwest this weekend. You mentioned Auburn being a team that, like, the numbers show that's not a bad team. They just can't stop turning the football over. I feel like they're very equivalent to what Washington is this year, where they're moving the ball like crazy, and they just can't score points, and they can't get it done in the red zone. And people expected a down year for them, but it doesn't seem to be a talent problem. It's an execution, penalties, boneheaded mistake kind of problem. Michigan's coming to town. They can't complete a forward pass, and they're an underdog against as a top-10 team on the road. It's just a weird matchup. What do you make? I know you previewed it last night, but for our Husky listeners, between that Michigan-Washington game. That's yeah, perfect comp. Auburn-Washington, one of the only times we'll comp those two, but it is a perfect comp. Uh, because they're both on paper, between the 20s, doing some good stuff, and then all hell breaks loose when they get into the red zone. So that's that. All right, That's baked in. We know that about them. The big question, and what you're trying to do if you're modeling or you're predicting or you're betting, is you're not trying to live in the rearview mirror, as Meemaw would say. We're trying to live in the windshield. We're trying to look at what will happen. And do we have the game coming where Will Rogers continues to do what he's been doing or just do 75% of that because it is Michigan after all, but you do it and you don't turn the ball over and you finish drives third and fourth down all of a sudden looks good for you because if you do, Washington will beat Michigan. I mean, Washington is favored for a reason. I agree with the number, by the way. I think they're, they're very, they're not similar teams in that stylistically they're the same, but they are comparable teams in the sense that on a neutral field, they'd still be about even. That's why the number's two or two and a half home field with Washington implied. So I, I got more DMs about this game this week <laughs> than any game because I had Michigan folks that just couldn't wrap their minds around the idea that they're a dog. How, how are we a top 10 team and we're a dog? Mm -hmm. Well, the answer is you're not a top 10 team. That's the short answer, <laughs> right. but they don't want to hear that. So well, the AP would never lie to me, Daddy. What, well, the AP is the truth teller out there. So uh, I think the formula has to be the same as they did against the USC. Don't even pretend you're allowed to throw the ball. Just run it, run it, run it. Pull the game into quicksand. Uh, let Washington get their yardage between the 20s, but you know, follow the typical Washington game script and 
that's Michigan's hope to win. But Mich- here's the thing about Michigan's hope. Even if they play that kind of game, it, it comes with a razor-tight margin for error. So if Michigan gets their game, it should be a close, ugly game. Uh, last one for you. It's a two-parter. Uh, the Big 12 is as crazy as we all thought. Look at BYU at the top of the conference. I know you really like Iowa State, but Texas Tech is up there. I didn't think they were very good. How about them? Kansas State, I think, is the best, but we don't know. The craziness of the Big 12, who you think the best team is, and and Swag asked before the show, he was curious your thoughts, it's October, as you mentioned, October 2nd here. <laughs> Should the playoff committee be giving their rankings earlier than, like, week eight? I, I, I think yes, but I'm curious your thoughts on that. I've always been in favor of it because I don't care how early people put out rankings as long as they properly calibrate week over week. Yeah. What you don't want is you don't want the old AP mentality of we're going to rank a team number one to start the season. And even if they look terrible and other teams look elite, we're not going to bump them off that perch because they deserve to be number one until being beaten. They don't deserve anything. They deserve the same treatment everyone else does. So if you're willing to do that as a committee member, if you're willing to hit the reset button and re-rank from scratch every week, then I'm fine with it. I don't trust those people to do it, but in theory, I'd be fine with it. Now, the other – let's look at this week in totality because the Big 12 is exactly where I thought it would be. Um, we've got Kansas State goes to Brigham Young, gets skull drug, but it was a very misleading final, and then they recover and immediately dispose of Oklahoma State. I think can't, I agree with you. I would power rate Kansas State number one in the conference right now. I think Iowa State ultimately is going to have something to say about it. They'd be right there. I think they play at the end of the year. Iowa State's got Utah and Kansas State end of the year back-to-back. I think that there are still like half a dozen teams that could win that thing. That's why it's America's College Football Conference. I love it. I encourage everyone to watch it. They're paying me nothing, but they should be paying me a lot to be the spokesperson for the conference. <laughs> and so I'm actually sitting in a parking lot right now. I'm about to go upstairs to the tattoo parlor and get the Big 12 logo and print it on my lower back. That's yeah. how much I love it right now. Oh, just yeah, put, it near, near, put it in the backside, then the pucker factor for the Big 12 will exactly. always exist. Then it's always exactly. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look forward to the pucker factor on the show on uh, Thursday. Do you want to break any news before we let you go about next weekend's plans? Just, you know, giving you the opportunity. <laughs> I want to break the news. <laughs> that I cannot wait to be in the same area code as you guys oh. when we talk next week. Oh, well, cool. hold on, Wednesday. Oh. You know what? Don't, don't pin me down on travel yet. Okay. I, just, I just can't wait to be much closer yes. to my dear friends who I'm normally three time zones away from. <laughs> I love it. Josh Pay, check out the show every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, live on YouTube, 5 o'clock our time. The podcast is great. The show is great. It's the best in college football, at Josh Pay CFB on Twitter. Always appreciate it. We'll have the uh, gift basket waiting for you next week, and uh, enjoy the chaos Saturday. All right, guys. Appreciate it. There you go. Josh Pate.